And I was like, why are you so obsessed with me? Obsession, the root of fame and the root of the demise of the famous. Let's explore. I am obsessed with the idea of obsession. I have always wondered what type of person becomes obsessed enough to stalk a celebrity. What is the mindset of someone who genuinely believes they aren't some creepy stranger and instead someone who can make a celebrity fall head over heels for them in the same way that they have for their celebrity crush? I think I'm just as sick as them. The study of psychology has revealed some stunning truths about the mental state of our most deranged. There is something about the celebrity which brings about the worst of our human behaviors, absolute sickness. According to Psychology Today, some suffer from a condition called erotomania. As the etymology suggests, it is an erotic mania that causes obsession based on sexual attraction. The article also states that only 10% of stalkers are erotomanic, but most are aggressive. There is typically no means to an end with them. In fact, most seek to eliminate their target of interest and then themselves. The article continues that even if the object of their misguided affections rejects them, they persist because they know the truth. Now what truth is this? The idea of the truth in their head. They are purely convinced that these feelings are mutual and that the fear and legal actions against them is an unwarranted barrier between them and their celebrity lover. In fact, they see it as a connection. It's pure delusion. There is a misguided flirtation and acknowledging the existence of a stalker. Your fear is their aphrodisiac. The article establishes that to a stalker, even a restraining order is a sign of affirmation. Another article from Psychology Today states that there are seven types of celebrity stalkers. Type 1. The Rejected. This group consists of people who previously knew or had a relationship with the celebrity they are stalking. If I love you, bitch, ain't nobody gonna have you. Fuck that. I'm tearing up everything. Got together, guys? No. Run right away. Yeah, you hit me. You bumped right into me. Yo, Chris, bro. See you Chris. Move to the back. Move to the back. How do you feel about Chris still making songs about you? You think you guys might get back together in the future? Nope. Nope. Type 2 Resentful. This is the most common type. These types of stalkers expect some sort of response or even assistance and don't get it from the person that they're stalking. Alec Baldwin, for my money, the best Baldwin, actually cried in a New York City courtroom this morning as he described his living nightmare. Baldwin, the debonair star of 30 Rock, claims he was stalked by this woman, a two-bit Canadian actress named Genevieve Sabourin. And I've said it loud and clear that I'm innocent since day one. Baldwin claims she would bombard him with up to 30 text messages a night. Here's one. Say I do to me. He says she showed up at his Hamptons home, that she bombarded him with salacious emails. And here's a taster dished up in court. I want to feel you, taste you and make one with you for eternity. I will nourish you with my energy, power and magic. She offered all this and more in exchange for a new house in New York and Montreal, a new wardrobe, car, and jewels. In one email, she simply states, I want to be your wife, now. Last year, Sabaran was arrested outside Baldwin's Manhattan home. She claims it was a misunderstanding that she and Baldwin were once lovers. You want to go for a coffee for closure with your ex-lover? It's four in the afternoon. It's not like I was there unannounced. You know, you announce yourself to somebody you have a relationship and a romance with for months and months, and we have many friends in common. It's normal. Alec Baldwin denies any relationship and today described his brush with Sabarin as like something out of a Hitchcock movie. Type 3. Intimacy seekers. These type of stalkers are stricken with the aforementioned erotomania. They feel entitled to a relationship with the object of their obsession, or they already have a relationship with the target. Out of the gate. Just watch this. Put your hands on the wall. Yes, sir. It's 4 a.m., and those are the gates of Miley Cyrus's Hollywood home. That man, 40-year-old Jason Luis Rivera, had a giant red heart around his neck and an unhealthy obsession with the 19-year-old singer. Oh, I have a scissors. Rivera was found guilty of trespass and slapped with a three-year restraining order. He's not allowed within a thousand yards of Miley. Type 4. Help Seekers. 
They're not quite resentful like type two, but they are indeed desperate for some sort of help in their lives. Type five, incompetent suitors. This type attempts to impress their target with inept and increasingly disturbing romantic gestures. They're the type of romantic hopeful who doesn't get the message in a laughable way that turns to behavior that no one finds funny. <laughs> Type 6. Predatory. Thankfully, the least common. These types are dangerous and develop secret plans for intimate attacks. Is there something about these celebrity magazines and the personal photos that they contain that sort of drives the behavior of the stalkers? The more the magazines humanize the celebrity figure, the more it can reduce that space between the stalker and the celebrity figure. And as the buffer decreases, the cost of fame goes up. Type 7. Attention seekers. This type I found to be the most interesting. They seek to have a relationship with the celebrity to bolster their own fame, or they seek to enlist the celebrity as a part of their own cause to promote it with their fame. I didn't even know that your typical sycophant socialite could potentially be categorized as a type of stalker. Welcome to Hollywood. And after those seven types, there is one more unique type called the chaotic stalker who was so psychotic that there seems to be no clear motive. Think of the scene with the Joker and Batman in The Dark Knight. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? You know what I am? I'm a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't know what to do with one if I caught it. You know, I just do things. By the way, these types are not definite markers for stalkers. But I do believe Madonna Stalker defines the aforementioned erotomania and violent intent discussed earlier. You don't become the most famous woman of all time and not attract some unwanted attention. In May of 1995, a homeless man named Robert Hoskins genuinely believed that Madonna was meant to be his wife. He climbed the walls of her Hollywood Hills home and was scared off by her security. He also had a wooden board that said, Love to my wife, Madonna. It was misspelled with the missing O and missing punctuation, but that wasn't enough. He threatened to harm her if she didn't respond. He scaled the wall again and was shot and wounded. When Madonna appeared in court, she felt sick at the fact that she was in his presence. Her thoughts were plagued with so much fear to the point where she had nightmares about him entering her home. He was charged and sentenced. She hoped the case would help any and everyone at risk of stalking. He escaped from a mental institution in 2012 and was caught shortly after. Now she's releasing a book on the cases she won that landed LA's most sinister stalkers behind bars. He threatened to kill the bodyguard. He threatened to slice Madonna's throat from ear to ear. And he left this totally bizarre note for her in the mailbox in the front of the gate. In this grainy security video, Robert Hoskins is seen jumping the wall at Madonna's former Hollywood Hills home, then walking up the path to her front door. She came up the road leading to her house, and Hoskins, her stalker, passed literally within a couple of feet of her. This is the note Hoskins left behind. And it was bizarre. You know, it was, be mine, please be my wife. When Hoskins tried again to break in, Madonna's security guard shot him, putting him in the hospital. But even as Saunders filed a case against Hoskins, she says Madonna refused to cooperate. She actually said, you should know I don't do what other people want me to do. But Saunders didn't give up. She ordered Madonna to court or pay a $5 million fine. It worked. When I announced the people call Madonna Chacon, there was just silence in the room. Then Madonna explained why she avoided court. She said, number one, sitting here 10 feet away from this man who threatened to kill me is making me violently ill. And number two, we're giving him what he wants, which is to be 10 feet away from me. And she was absolutely right because he's sitting there and I can hear him humming Madonna songs. After a 10 year prison term, Hoskins is now in a lockdown psychiatric facility. In 1989, actress Rebecca Schaefer caused a real shift in how people view celebrity stalkers. Schaefer was stalked by her murderer, Robert John Bardo, for three years. He is serving life in prison at Avenal State Prison in California. His prior obsession was with this child peace activist named Samantha Smith, 
who passed away in a plane crash in 1985. Bardo attempted to get onto the set of My Sister Sam, which starred Schaefer. Bardo obtained Schaefer's address from a detective agency that found it via the DMV. On July 18, 1989, Bardo descended onto Schaefer's home. Being the obsessive stalker that he was, he felt a sense of ownership over Schaefer and her image. She engaged in a sex scene in the film's Scenes from the Class Struggle in Beverly Hills. In his eyes, she had lost her innocence and become another Hollywood whore. He visited her at her apartment and told her he was a big fan. After having been turned away by Schaefer, Bardo stopped at a diner for breakfast, only to return to the apartment about an hour later, again ringing the doorbell. When Schaefer opened the door, Bardo shot her in the chest. Bardo was arrested in Tucson, Arizona, where he was observed walking aimlessly in traffic. For the first time in a long time, they were seen as a truly dangerous threat to entertainers for something to be taken more seriously than they were before. Stalkers were not just fanatics, now they were actual threats. This was a wake-up call for the protection of the celebrity. For the protection celebrities get from the cops and the courts, they have this woman to thank, Rebecca Schaefer, a rising young star in the 1980s. She played Patty on the hit TV show, My Sister Sam. Brandon is intelligent and sensitive and artistic. Back in those days, there were no stalking laws in California or anywhere else for that matter. And Rebecca Schaefer had a stalker, a man named Robert Bardot. He's a stalker. My attention grew more and more. And I tried to contact her, and there was no response. I couldn't understand that. Bardot was enraged when he saw Schaefer getting into bed with another man in the movie Scenes from the Class Struggle in Beverly Hills. Classic stalker behavior. How dare she? She's not remaining pure for me. And they put the victim on a pedestal, but then once they're rejected, it's anger, rage, and rejection. Bardo tracked Schaefer down. He showed up at her apartment with a gun. I didn't, I didn't even know she would be. I was like, no, pull the gun, shoot. He shot Rebecca Schaefer dead on her front doorstep. She had to be a victim of a homicide in order for us to get the message that something needs to be done in the way of legislation to address stalking crime. Of course, John Lennon's untimely demise happened nine years earlier, but his was so peculiar and unique that it did not prompt the same course of action as celebrity stalking cases that succeeded it. Mark David Chapman's incessant planning of how perfect he wanted his actions to be and how meticulously he planned them put Lennon's death in such a peculiar place because it felt so specific to him and not fame in general. Chapman took issue with the Beatles playfully stating that they wanted to be more famous than Jesus Christ. It's absolutely disgusting to even give him the airtime he truly desired, but in this country, criminality is the surest way to fame, especially if it's the violation of a celebrity. Fame attracts and rewards its obsessors in the strangest ways. After learning this, the catcher in the rye was never the same again. Welcome back to Larry King Live with Mark David Chapman. Mark, will you relive with us those uh, terrible moments for you, for the world, for a lot of people uh, around and in circles close to John Lennon? What happened that night? Well, if you want to pick it up from the night, um, I was standing there with a gun in my pocket. Knew you were going to shoot him? So, sorry? Knew you were going to shoot him? Absolutely. Chapman is still alive and serving out his sentence in Wind Correctional Facility. But I am doing all of this for your sake. By sacrificing my freedom and possibly my life, I hope, hope to change your mind about me. This letter is being written an hour before I leave for the Hilton Hotel. Jody, I'm asking you to please look into your heart and at least give me the chance with this historical deed to gain your respect and love. Some have gone to great lengths to get the attention of their victims. One even went as far as attempting to assassinate the President of the United States. All of this for Jodie Foster. In the summer of 1980, Hinckley read a story about Jodie Foster. The 18-year-old actress was taking a sabbatical from Hollywood to attend Yale University. So Hinckley told his parents that he was going back to college, but at Yale, not Texas Tech. And so he makes up a whole elaborate ruse to his parents about how he's going to go to Yale for a writing class that doesn't exist. And the whole time he spent stalking Foster, he finds out who, where she lives, he's slipping notes under her door, and he's on the phone with her. And he taped these calls. What is this? Oh, no. What is this? Maybe he's 
Who is this? Oh no. Oh no, not you, a cat. Look, I really can't touch you, okay? But do, do me a really big favor. You understand why I can't, you know, carry on these conversations with people I don't know. You understand that it's dangerous and it's just not done, it's not fair, and it's rude. Oh, All right? well, I'm not Well, I understand that, but it's just, it's the same thing, okay? So you just don't ever want to be No, it's been we'll really see. nice talking to you. John Hinckley is now free as of 2016. Released in June if he complied with certain conditions. Hinckley, who is now 67, shot at Reagan as the president was exiting a Washington hotel. The bullet punctured a lung, causing internal bleeding. Three others were also wounded. Hinckley was found not guilty in the case by reason of insanity. Although not one individual stalker, I do consider the relentless paparazzi hounding of Britney Spears to be a form of stalking that is seemingly perfectly legal. Even in a post-Princess Diana world, this type of behavior is still considered acceptable. <laughs> Princess Diana dead. <gasps> oh, she died. Where's the remote? You would think that the same stalking laws that coincided with Rebecca Schaefer's case would be enacted after the tragedy of the late Princess Diana of Wales. But, even a tragic death proves to be to no avail in stopping the dehumanization of the celebrity. The princess was ending a visit to a sheltered housing and workshop project at Cramlington in Northumberland. The man suddenly burst from the crowd towards her, but was quickly overcome by detectives. The princess simply carried on, seemingly unconcerned about what had happened. But amateur video shot by someone in the crowd appears to show the man did actually reach her. She fell back and the policeman was there, he, you know, the pink clothes guy, he was straight there. And there was a gun, sort of, you know, visible in his coat. Inspector Alan Peters is the princess's personal bodyguard. He's accompanied her and Prince Charles on countless royal tours. In January, the Queen made him a member of the Royal Victorian Order. The incident highlights the danger faced by members of the royal family carrying out official engagements. A pro-IRA demonstrator tried to get to the Duchess of York during her visit to America last year. But today, police denied there'd been a major breach of security. The man was detained by security officers. He's been taken to a local police station where he's been questioned, and it's too soon to say uh, what action will be taken against him, if any. The man was later named as Edward Adcock. Last year, he hit the headlines by trying to embrace Olympic sprinter Flo Jo Griffith Joyner. Tonight, after being released on bail, he apologized for the trouble he'd caused. I've always admired her, he said, was in the process of giving her a hug, but I didn't realize it would finish up this way. Diana also had a stalker named Klaus Wagner. That lies about me and that then brought me into prison. The German doctor is neatly dressed, but his mission is less conventional. 38-year-old Klaus Wagner has become notorious as a stalker tracking the Princess of Wales. Diana, I don't know. I don't know. It depends you know, Diana, how people want to look at things, I suppose. Morals. Just morals, nothing else. Diana. Lacking. Lacking morals. Not lacking anything else, just a morals. Diana. Domine dirige nos. O oh Lord, guide us. Britney Spears was also a victim of both paparazzi stalking and interpersonal stalking by her ex, Jason Alexander. Very recently, he stormed her home and the venue of her wedding to her new husband, Sam Esgari. Britney Spears' ex-husband has been arrested for trespassing at her home on her wedding day. Jason Alexander, who is Britney's first husband, was live on Instagram walking through the area where today's wedding is set to take place. The Ventura County Sheriff's Department responded to a trespassing call and took Alexander into custody on an outstanding warrant. Alexander and Spears were only married for a few days back in 2004. Today, Brittany is marrying Sam Ashgari in a small ceremony at her home. The couple met on the set of a music video in 2016. This is Brittany's third marriage. TLC ran an episode on this woman who stalks celebrities as her main pastime and her only real passion in life. 
Nessa dedicates nearly eight hours a day to hunting down stars. Her apartment walls are plastered with just a small portion of the 10,000 photos she's taken over the years. This whole entire box is full of a whole bunch of photos of celebrities, and I have about 20, 30 different boxes. To me, there's no such thing as a celebrity being an A-lister or a B-lister or a C-lister. They're all celebrities. Luke Perry, Green Day, Meatloaf. Your cat a stalker named Ricardo Lopez. In magazine, uh, I believe it was last month. A little bitty article there, picture of York. Picture of a man by the name of Gold, a black man, of course. He says, I just had a deliciously sadistic plan, and he talks about how he would like to inflict his pain onto her, that she has a new boyfriend. She is no stranger to male lust. You know, started hitting the, you know, the truck and saying, you know, you, you have no idea what I'm capable of. You, you, don't, you think you know me, but you don't know me. Uh, As Lopez's feelings grow angrier and more explosive, you can see there amid the clutter of his apartment, books on forensic serial killers, crime. The reason why I'm going to do this is because I want to. Richard Ramirez was known as the walk-in killer. His crimes are much too dire to mention. He is every celebrity's worst fear. The walk-in killer? In a post-Lennon world, try a walk-up killer. Demi Lovato had fans rush on stage and had to evacuate it. <laughs> The same thing happened to Shawn Mendes when a barricade to block fans gave way and he had to flee. To meet Shawn Mendes for autographs and pictures. In a video taken, Shawn can be seen approaching the gate, but the situation took a turn for the worse. A group of fans somehow made it past the barricade, and all you see is Shawn sprinting away from his entourage and a group of fans running after him. Celebrities in public settings getting unwanted attention is all too common. They see a show and an overzealous fan sees an opportunity to greet their false god in person. What happens when a celebrity stalker is another celebrity? This is not like Tran and Brown. This is something totally unique to Gaga. Perez Hilton allegedly got an apartment right next to Gaga to keep close tabs on her. They had a falling out when he made her cry. I'm not sure why someone who, at the time, was the biggest celebrity of the moment would befriend someone who covers celebrities for a living but she didn't deserve to have her privacy invaded. Although the attraction aspect of stalking mostly seems to be a phenomenon involving celebrity women and stalker men, sometimes those men display dangerous affections for other men. Steven Spielberg stalked. They are more often than not repeat offenders. Paris Hilton had her stalker attack her on live TV and she recognized him from another past incident. The attention of this man. He defied a restraining order to get close to the reality star, and now he's under arrest because he's done it yet again. Josh is here with the story, and you know, this has been a serious event with other celebrities, some of whom have been hurt or killed by stalkers. Indeed, which is why this is so frightening. And that word, again, that is important here. And again, as you mentioned, Paris Hilton for years seeking out that spotlight and the fame and the fortune that came with it. But with all of that also came some unwanted admirers, ones who could be very dangerous. At first glance, the man in this photo with a sly grin on his face might not seem sinister, but for Paris Hilton, the sheer sight of 36-year-old James Rainford means a nightmare has returned. On Monday, police took Rainford into custody, arrested after allegedly peering into Hilton's Malibu beach house. He was violating a protective order requiring him to stay 200 yards from Hilton. This time, she watched the scene unfold from the safety of her balcony. But just three months ago, Rainford got much, much closer. In April, Rainford attacked Hilton's boyfriend in broad daylight outside an L.A. courthouse. Watch as he leaps onto the screen. More chilling, Hilton's immediate recognition that the man was a stalker. That is the guy who came on the bike to my Jesus house. Christ. <gasps> Who is this guy? Who is, who is that person? Oh my god, that's another intruder who came to my house on a bike. Good. What did he do? Okay? He attacked my security at my are you house. Okay? Honey, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. This guy yeah. just attacked what my boyfriend. Okay. Okay. You're right, sweetheart. Are you okay, Paris? I cannot believe that the same person is here. At the time of the attack, 
Rainford had already been arrested once for breaking into Hilton's home. And as he was dragged off in handcuffs, you can hear his questionable state of mind. Were you trying to attack Paris Hilton? No, I wasn't. You, you proposed know? to her and she's accepted? Yes, she did. Right. You're going to have to walk right over there. The yes, dog. she did. When is the wedding? I've got the picture in my pocket, I'll show you. Where? Rainford was sentenced to 227 days in prison for the attack. So why was he on the beach outside Hilton's home just 68 days later? Like so many stalkers, he was released from custody early which is why Alexis Moore, a stalking victim and the founder of Survivors in Action, believes jail time is the only answer. We're sending a message to the perpetrator every time they receive a lighter sentence. We're sending the message to them that, hey, go ahead and do it. Nothing's going to happen to you. Now, Rainford is facing charges for violating a protective order that required him to stay some 200 yards away from Paris Hilton. Perhaps more importantly, he's also violated now a three years probation that could now be stayed. Uh, you figure if he does go back to prison, perhaps it will be for more than just 68 a days this time. A little bit longer this yeah. time. All right, Josh, thank you so mm -hmm. much. Although most wouldn't get too close to their stalkers, Robert Pattinson had a dinner date with his stalker. His plan worked scare her off, come off as unattractive as possible, and have her lose interest. Perfect. At the end of the day, obsession makes a star and a monster, the difference of which purely depends on which side of the camera you're on. So busy being watched that you can't see. Eyes open. You only know you're being watched. But not by whom. No. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. 